Welcome back to Facebook Live uh, and this celebration of Harry Chapin's, what would have been his 75th birthday. We have two very special guests. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Good to be here. Thanks so much for joining us. And what we wanted to do is just get some stories from you uh, and hearing what your um, involvement with Harry was. And uh, Mr. Downing, maybe we'll start with you because I, I think you probably had a little bit of a personal relationship as well as understanding the whole political nature that Harry was involved in. <clears throat> That's right. When I ran in 1974, nobody really gave me very much of a chance to win. And a former colleague, uh, a friend, Allard Lowenstein, said, you should get Harry Chapin to help you. He's the kind of king of lost causes, and maybe he'll do a, a, a concert for you. <clears throat> and I said, well, geez, I've, I've, I'm flattered. I know who he is. Um, I had heard Taxi. And so I made an appointment in June of 1974 to go visit him at his house in the morning. It was a beautiful day. He had a, ho he had a home in um, Huntington Bay that overlooked the bay. And uh, it was early in the morning and he answered the door in the bathrobe. And um, he said, just hold on a minute. And uh, one of my aides was with me, uh, one of the campaign volunteers. And a few minutes later, Harry came out with a guitar. And he said, before we talk or say anything, I want to play a song for you. Um, and in his bathrobe uh, on this glorious day on the porch, he played Cats in the Cradle, which was a beautiful song and and of course i'm there as a supplicant so when he turned to me and said what did you think i both honestly said look this is a beautiful song and it's going to be a giant hit but as i confessed later on in life if he had played the c major scale i probably would have said the same <laughs> right. thing um, but um the fact is that years later harry would say you know i played this song for tom and he was right he said it would be a big hit i never had the heart to tell him I would have told him that in any event, uh, but uh, it was a remarkable song. And the funny thing about him, he did go on to play um, a benefit concert for me. We raised some money. <clears throat> and then when I won, uh, much to my surprise, he showed up at election night uh, at the uh, IBEW Hall on Long Island and said, I had to come and say hello because I've never played a concert for somebody who actually won before. <laughs> 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 so, uh, in any event, that's my Chapin story, and I loved him and did whatever he wanted uh, ever since. Yeah, no, that, that's awesome. Well, Senator Dorgan, what about you? Uh, how does a, a senator from North Dakota get involved with a guy like Harry Chapin? Oh, well, first of all, let me tell you how happy I am you're doing this on what would have been his 75th birthday. And I, I just think it's a wonderful thing to do. He. He did some extraordinary things uh, that really burned his image in my consciousness and the consciousness of a lot of Americans about an artist that did things that changed changes the world in many ways. So uh, I was I was asked to speak at a food policy conference at Rutgers University in New Jersey. I was a state tax commissioner for North Dakota. I don't remember how I got invited there, but I so I went there to speak. And uh, Harry uh, spoke just in front of me, and then he stayed and listened to my speech. And he came over to me, and we started talking, and uh, and uh, we became friends. And I saw Harry at two or three other places at different times. We visited, became good friends. And then uh, he said to me, you know, uh, I, I think you're going to run for Congress at some point. When you do call me, I want to come and do a concert. And so uh, I called him. And uh, he said, absolutely. I gave him the date. I rented a place to Chester Fritz Auditorium at the University of North Dakota. It holds 1,400 people. I printed the tickets, did all the things, and promoted it right. And about a week before the concert, I thought, you know, I, I don't have anything in paper from Perry. So I called Ken Cragen, and I said, Ken, uh, you know, we don't have a contract or anything, and I've put money out for this big venue. And, and Ken said, well, don't worry about that. If, if Harry says he'll be there, he'll be there. And sure enough, the day before, Harry called me and said, now, I'm, I've, I've got a concert in the Midwest, but I'm going to go back that night to New York because I've got a meeting in the morning in New York City, and then I'm going to fly out to North Dakota. And so wow. he came to North Dakota. We picked him up, and uh, uh, but I said to him on the phone, I said, but what, what do you need? you need anything? He said, oh, just get me a Martin guitar, if you don't mind, from the local music store. I'll be fine. 
And he showed up and, um, you know, 1,400 people, we sold the place out. And he showed up, sat on stage with a Martin guitar, and he played for two hours. And one of the most remarkable things, the people loved him, as you know. I mean, 30, you know, yep. was it 30,000 pounds of bananas? I don't remember how many pounds of bananas. 30,000, yep. <laughs> a better place to be. All these songs that just spun out of this wonderful storyteller. But the most important part of Harry Chapin, in my judgment, was what he told the crowd that night. And we told anybody who would listen. He said, you know what? I give one concert for me, then I give one concert for the other guy. That's and that's what he did with his life. Uh, he had a profound impact on world hunger. I mean, a profound impact. I won't go into the great detail, but, uh, you know, he wrote the shortest story. Uh, I believe it's called, uh, it, yeah. it's, you know, he, he was a remarkable man. I'm so pleased you're doing this. Oh, that, that is awesome. And uh, I, I would love to speak to you a little bit more because I'm sure you have some thoughts on how he would sort of be facing the current political environment and how he would, um, you know, address some of the issues that were going. I think we have one of your uh, colleagues that's knocking on our door and we're going to have to run right now, but really do appreciate you guys uh, checking in with us. And thanks so much for helping us celebrate Harry's 75th birthday. Thanks, well, thank Joe. you for doing it. Thank you. Happy to do it. Take care. And uh, coming up, uh, uh, for everyone that's listening, we'll, we have a few more interviews coming up, including Senator Patrick Leahy. And, um, and so uh, while we're on this little short break setting up, feel free to visit the website betterplacetobe.org. And we'll see you soon. Thanks so much. Sorry it was so Thank rushed. You. We're, we're good, good. scrambling and running here. That's okay. Really, Thank really appreciate Thank it. Thank you.